This video is sponsored by Kempower. Hey guys, and welcome to another video with my good friend. Volvo Christian. Thank you, thank you. Already welcome back. back, welcome back. Thank you, thank you. We just did a video with the smart hashtag one versus the Volvo EX30. <laughs> you gotta, you know, throw up the gang signs. The I'm gang from signs. Fauna in Bergen. You know, the, the hood. The hood. Uh, but you're actually from the hood. You're from Olsson, a studio. I'm from Olsson. Very loud, you know. And we have now started the Vapor Gang. Yeah, yeah, we're the Vapor Gang, but we did a video you guys seem to like, so we're back with another comparison. But today, the cars are not related other than they are the same brand. Yeah. They're actually on two different platforms. And this is an interesting comparison because today we want to find out if you're looking at, you know, a, a Volvo, an electric car from Volvo, maybe you're looking at a C40, maybe you're looking at an XC40, and you're thinking, hmm, should I spend that much money? Or maybe I should go for a cheaper EX30 because if you look at these two cars new, this is about 160 hmm. to 180,000 kroners, less expensive spec for spec or yeah. about 14 to 16,000 euros. At least new. At least new, but yeah. also keep in mind that the C40 actually just got a facelift now. So it's now called the EC40 mm -hmm. and the e EX40. 14, yeah. And it got a power bump, a minor facelift. And if you look at a new one of these and you look at a year one old C40. Yeah, they're actually priced very similar. You can get both for like 520, 540. Yeah. So you're looking at a year old one yeah. with about 10, 10 to 15,000 15, kilometers, kilometers yeah. on the clock. So keep that in mind, guys, when we're going to do the comparison. But hopefully at the end of the video, you are going to find out which of these two cars you should choose if you're looking at a new electric Volvo. Let's start talking about the exterior styling of the EX30. So Christian, what do you think about the EX30? As I have said before, it is actually quite handsome. This is definitely the best one of these uh, three Clover uh, with the smart hashtag uh, one. And, you gotta uh, do the hashtag one. And the CQX. <laughs> so uh, this is definitely the best the one. Zeker the X. Zeker X. And this what, is the this Zeker is X. <laughs> <laughs> No, I think this is really, really attractive. Uh, even if this is a quite boring color, the vapor gray, but I don't know. I think exterior-wise, it looks really good. Yeah I, yeah, I like it. It looks very simple in photos and in videos, but there are a lot of creases, mm. a lot of lines. I think it is a very handsome design that is going to age very well. Mm. And Volvo designs usually age very well because let's take a look at the C40, which I know it's a new car that came out a few years ago, but mm. the design is based on the XC40, which came out in like 2017, yeah. which is like seven years ago, seven years. and it still looks yeah. fresh. So this design basically came out seven years ago, and I think it looks fabulous. Yeah. What do you think? Fabulous. I think it's actually really, really cool. I'm a huge fan of the C40, and especially this sloping roofline with this LED light signature. Really, really cool. So this is definitely my favorite. I remember when the XC40 came out in mm. 2017 and it was kind of a departure from the new Volvo design language. So mm. this is kind of in between the first SPA cars and then the new, you know, EX90, EX30 design mm. language. Language. This is a little bit of its own thing, but I think it's aged so well. And yeah. I really love the C40 shape, the fastback mm. SUV shape of this compared to the XC40 or yeah. EX40, which is now called. I think this is one of the best looking, especially when you have not these, which are the 19 inch wheels, when you have the 20 inch wheels mm -hmm. with this car, it is one of the best looking electric cars in my opinion. Yeah. Kempower offers some of the best DC fast chargers in the world with their unique, sleek and modern load balancing charging satellites. The small satellites translates to spacious and airy charging locations. When you as a user roll up to a Kempower charging station, you don't have to think about connecting to a charger that delivers the correct speed for your car. The Kempower load balancing chargers automatically will allocate the correct power to your car, maximizing the charging speed for the whole site. When connected, Kemp Power Chargers have a QR code you can scan and this way you can easily monitor your charging session remotely regardless of payment method. This is just super cool. A huge thanks to my friends at Kemp Power in Finland for sponsoring this video. Back inside the EX30. So if you guys saw our comparison video where we talked about the smart 
Hashtag One Hashtag. versus the EX30. I preferred this interior. It's a lot more simple in its design mm. than the Smart. And Ooh. yeah, some people prefer that. Some people don't mm. prefer that. But this compared to the C40, C40. which one do you prefer? Uh, I gotta go C40. It's just, you pay more, you get more. But if you think about a second-hand one, then it's definitely more appealing. Because I don't, I don't need a small city car per se. I just need mm. a, so I don't, the extra 20 centimeters doesn't bother me with the, with the C compared to this. Yeah, because I think the front cabin, I think this maybe feels a little bit more spacious and this is maybe a little bit more practical, but yeah. the rear seats, let's hop into the rear of this and see how small this car really is compared to the C40. So Christian, you're yes. now sat in the rear seat of the EX30. Do you have a lot of room? <laughs> uh, not a lot, but uh, it's decent enough. But I'm just uh, 170 centimeters, so I think if you are taller, you will definitely be touching the seat back in front. Yeah. But it's uh, cramped. It's cramped. So I'm I'm a little bit taller. I'm five foot ten or 178 centimeters. So I'm about you know an average adult, depending on. I mean, in Western Europe, I'm average, but in the U.S., I think you would be closer to average. So it depends on what market you you're buying mm. your car in and where you live. But I just have my my knees are just about touching. Hmm. So if I want to be comfortable, I have to sit just a little bit like spreading my legs, which I'm as a man, I'm not used to, but I think <laughs> I could do that yeah. in a pinch. But you also see shoulder to shoulder. It's, yeah. it's, it's pretty close. It's pretty close. So I can think like, three people no, in this one. No, three people here. Yeah. I yeah. may be in a pinch, but yeah. there's also very little room for my feet underneath the, the, the front seat here. So I think three people in the rear here, that's a no-go. A uh, no-go. Did you just jump in the back seat of a limo? Oh yeah, definitely. So much room here. There's so much yeah. more room there. Okay, so we set both front seats to about the position where I would be mm. sitting and driving. And let's hop in. Yeah, I mean, this is... Okay, maybe I would sit a little bit further back, but not by much. This is so much more roomy. Yeah. And it's also m more convenient uh, functions like armrest, arm cup holders, yeah. individual uh, air vents, yeah. heated uh, rear seats. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So you feel uh, yeah, more appreciated. I, I think there's less headroom yeah. because of that, uh, you yeah, know, that, uh, that fastback design, mm. which is to be expected. But I remember when me and you went to the launch uh, of the EX30 in Italy last mm. year, me, you and the representative from Volvo, we got picked up in a C40 to yeah. and from the airport, from the hotel. And I, I, I was so comfortable. Yeah. I, I was like, this is like, for a long trip, mm. the seats are comfortable. I think you sit higher up yeah. off the floor than you do in the, in the XC30, EX30, I mean. And there's, I hear I could, there's so much more room for my feet. Look at this, I could really stretch out. Mm. So I think if you're looking to carry people in the rear seats, yeah. if it's children or adults, or you want, I don't know, an Uber. Yeah. This is way better mm. than that EX30. This feels much more dated in here. Yeah. As much as I love the exterior, and I think this looks better on the exterior than the EX30, though it doesn't look as new and as fresh, I still really think it does look modern, mm. but maybe not as modern as the EX30 on the outside. I think this interior is where this car feels much more dated compared to the yeah. EX30 in my opinion. I, I kind of have to agree, especially with regards to the infotainment. Mm. It's, it's a good infotainment, but you, everything you touch, um, the menu setup are more yeah, cramped. Mm -hmm. It's a mm -hmm. smaller screen. Yeah, it's much smaller. This is like 9.3 yeah. inches. And everything are, is more clumsy than the EX30. That is much easier to navigate in. Yeah. yeah. Um, but so. with that being said, I mean, I've done an extensive review on the EX30, mm. you've done extensive reviews, so we're going to link all of them in the description box down below if you really want to have a deep dive into the interior ergonomics and the infotainment system of both of these two cars because we both have videos mm. where we're talking about it extensively. We also have videos on this car, but this is a much older car, so it's not as fresh. But what I really like about this car, which I think Volvo have, you know, gone backwards mm. and failed with the EX30, 
is the what I call the in interior ergonomics. So that's the combination, the total ecosystem mm. of the button layout, the stock layout, and the infotainment system as, as one usable system. Yes, you can have a car like a Tesla, which has an awesome infotainment system, mm. but they remove stocks, they mm. remove buttons, which makes the whole user experience Definitely. worse. And yeah. I think the user experience here, despite the infotainment system, yeah. maybe not being as smooth to use, maybe mm. not having a, you know, as big of a screen, not looking as fresh, maybe not being as intuitive. I think as a whole, using this car yeah, definitely. on a daily basis yeah. is so much better. Yeah. Definitely, and that is also regards to the steering wheel buttons, yes. the way you interact, and also the stocks. To have a separate stock for the window wiper and one for the indicator lights, mm -hmm. oh, that is underrated, because <laughs> that is a reason for me to get this instead of that one. Yeah. Um, I, I, exactly, exactly, and also the, like the interior design is 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 nicer, maybe mm. more pleasant to the eye. Though that I do prefer the EX30, yeah. and in my opinion, I don't think one is better than the other. I just think they're different. But I can mm. understand that people thinking like the oh the EX30 is so simple, they've removed so much things. But I actually think like the fit and finish. I mean, yeah. material quality here like is 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 better in this car. Like there's softer mm. touch plastics lower down in the cabin. The, the, the materials are more expensive yeah. in this car, but I think like the fit and the finish, like the gaps, the the, the tolerances of the interior in the X30 is an improvement. Yeah. And that's why I'm so excited about the Polestar 3, the mm. Volvo EX90, because though maybe this, this the design has taken a step back, I think like fit and finish, the execution is better in the new car than the old car. Like the, the gaps here around the buttons and everything doesn't feel as, premium as in the X30 in my opinion. Yeah. Interesting take, yeah. But overall, I prefer this interior because you have buttons mm. that work. They haven't buried like the distance uh, setting in the yeah. cruise control is right here on the steering mm. wheel. The the sensitivity on the auto wipers yeah. is one, two, three, four, five, mm. six, mm. seven on the stock yeah. instead of just three in a menu. Yeah. It is, this is so much better in most ways than that new car. Definitely. Let's take the EX30 out for a drive first. Oh, yeah? and hopefully we don't have audio issues as we had in our uh, last video yeah. where I actually had to voice over both the mm. driving part and the, the outro. But before we have to drive, we have to put the car into drive and then we have to turn off lane keep assist. Yes, I want to turn it off. And then you have to turn off speed limit warning. Oh, that doesn't give you a prompt. No. And then you have to turn off the most annoying thing, which is... Settings, driving, yes. safety. Safety, there's so driver many alert. menus. And then driver alert. Uh, get and up. then I also like to turn off the... Because even though you turn off lane keep, it still will, uh, yeah. it still will vibrate the steering wheel if you go over the lines. Mm. And now that it's winter, the weather is a little bit bad. Yeah. It's not winter anymore. I don't know. It's the cold end outside. Winter, yeah. End of winter. The the line markings aren't always uh, you know clean or visible, mm. and then the car just vibrates all the time. But what's really interesting, as I showed now, is that you have to turn it off, and then you got a prompt like, "Are you sure you want to turn it off?" But what's really curious, if you want to turn off ESC, yeah. you can just turn that off without yeah. any warning. That's a fun That's little. Weird. Yeah, yeah. That's weird. But if it's like, oh, are you sure you want to turn off lane keep assist? Yeah, yeah that's, that's really not, weird. That's, I haven't even thought about that. No, I, th I thought about that There's the no, other day driving. You know, you, ha you, you got a prompt if you want to change your lights from uh, regular lights to park lights. Then you get a prompt, are you sure? When, so weird. Yeah, when you're changing so the lights. So why the heck do you, see here, if you want to change the auto, you have to confirm it on the steering wheel. Oh, that's, uh, are you yeah. sure you want to change? Yeah, that's really weird. But not ESC. So, Funny. if I go off the throttle now, even though we are in one pedal mode, the car isn't in one pedal mode. And we actually filmed this when we w was in, in Sweden. I left mm. that part out of the video because we really critiqued it. Mm. But apparently, which the car doesn't tell you about, because if we go into um, yeah. four-wheel drive performance mode, then one pedal mode doesn't work. Yeah. But when you turn on one pedal or when you turn on performance four wheel drive mode, it doesn't tell you that no. one pedal mode isn't on. So if you go back and out again, where where's out? Here. Yep. And then you turn off one pedal driving mode, it's off. And then you turn it on, 
it doesn't tell you, oh, you are in performance no. mode, it won't work. It just doesn't work, like now. That's so weird. Like yeah. this car telling you a lot of things, like, are yeah, you sure I about this and this? Yeah. It's really bad at uh, informing you. Mm. So in my review, I got a lot of critique, or I didn't get a lot of critique. Most people in my review, which, which was on the single motor version, which was titled Hard to Recommend. Yeah, that one. Yeah. People are like, oh, you don't recommend it at all? And I'm like, no, I said it's hard to recommend. Mm. That's not the same as not recommending. No, no, no. I mean, if something is hard to recommend, it's hard to recommend. That's not the same, same thing as not recommending it. Um, but I find it hard to recommend because of all the software issues yeah. with this car. And again, go watch that video if you want, uh, you know, in depth of mm. what we're talking about. But I just want to touch upon it quickly because me and probably not Christian either, we can't review a car based on future promises on improvements or some people's thought of like, oh, this can be better or this can be better. Yeah. We have to review the product as, as is. As it sits now. Right, yeah. right or left? Oh, you can do left. Because we don't know if they're going to fix it. You no. guys don't know unless you actually are the software engineers at the different brand so like it's all up for grabs so mm. we have to review the product as it is so enough about that but what I really like about this car which I think I like better than the C40 yeah. we're gonna jump into the C40 after this driving section is the way this drives yeah. because I think the suspension tuning here the balance between ride and comfort is mm. better than in the C40 yeah. this is still very comfortable but also at the same time it doesn't feel heavy it feels sporty. Mm. The steering tuning is just more natural, in my opinion, and also it's quieter. Yeah, that's. Uh, There's less road noise. Yeah. And I hope that's true for this comparison. Mm. I haven't driven the C40 like in maybe three or four months, but this is on 20-inch wheels and that's on 19-inch wheels. Yeah. So maybe the difference is smaller than I remember, but I'm pretty sure that this is a lot more quiet. It is at least more quiet, but I think the wheel arches uh, or the wheel uh, house are not so good isolated in the EX30 versus 40. Because when I'm driving uh, on, uh, it was like loose, you know, uh, after they have been, um, instead of salt, we use yeah, like, uh, uh, like sand, sand or gravel, yeah, gravel, small, small. Uh, they were really noisy in the wheel arches uh, when I drove the 30. And the wheel arches are better isolated in the 40, okay, but, yeah. but um, on regular tarmac, this is actually, I also experience this to be a more quiet it's car. It's much, much less road noise. Yeah. So yeah. like it's less road noise and then you're thinking, oh, maybe the wheel arches are better insulated. I don't know, it's, it's really, I, I agree with what you're saying. I think there's more suspension noise in this. Yeah, but you, I could hear the stones is it yeah, hammering yeah, about. Yeah, sure. Yeah, but uh, that's just uh, like two or three weeks at the yeah, year. Yeah, exactly. When you have this uh, phenomenon with, with the gravel on the road. Yeah. yeah. So I think like this is really good to drive. All the things we don't like about maybe the interior with the infotainment mm. system, this car, in my opinion, redeems itself yeah. in the driving because, department. Yeah. And, if they, and if they fix and improve the software, yeah. like this is a very close to being perfect car at yeah. this price point, in my opinion, because yeah. I really Definitely. love the way it drives. This is like, I mean, people are excited about, and I'm even excited about the ID3 GTI. Yeah like the performance version with 326 horsepower which is going to do zero to 100 kilometers now like 5.6 seconds this the performance twin performance has 428 horsepower does zero to 100 kilometers now in 3.6 seconds this is yeah. like the rs version of or the the id3r yeah. this is so much quicker than any other car in this class even the brabus yeah uh, yeah it's like a uh, 0.1 yeah hashtag Brothers. That's yeah, 3.7 and these, this is yeah, 3.6 Yeah. and this is all-wheel drive compared to the uh, uh, ID3 GT GTI which is going to be it's uh, GTX, GTX, not GTI. Yeah. Yeah, I, I misspoke guys. Yeah. GTX, X, not yeah. GTI. And it doesn't have four-wheel drive as this one has. So no. uh, this, this is, uh, but as I said, with time this is going to be a real, real treat. Yeah, because yeah. You give it like four to five months when you have gotten a couple of uh, over-the-air updates to mm -hmm. tweak this, then you got a real winner in, yeah, in this car. I love the yeah. way this drives. I like yeah. the fact that it is small, it's it's nimble. Mm. It's just a really good car yeah. to drive. But let's hop into the C40 because I haven't driven one of these since late last year. And I'm really excited to see if I like this driving-wise better than that. Yeah, let's see. 
Okay, C40. Yeah. So one thing immediately that I remember about this car, which is a huge flaw for me, which is not a deal breaker, but I really don't like it, which I don't experience in the EX30, is that the dead pedal in this car is further back. Hmm. And the way I like to sit is I like to have my, my heel right on the floor with the dead pedal. So I always, you know, move the seat up into that position. But then I'm sitting maybe a little bit further back than I would in a car which where the dead pedal was, you know, further forward. And when I d then try to adjust the steering wheel, I just have a little bit too little reach in the okay. steering wheel in this car. I don't have that issue in the uh, Volvo no. EX30. So, I mean, that's something you guys have to, you know, look into. Yeah. With this car, I have an even bigger problem in the Polestar 2 because that car, you're sitting yeah. lower here. At least you can, you know, adjust the seat up and you can find a comfortable seating position. It's only a minor thing. Mm. I, for me, it can be a huge issue, really not, and it's not a deal breaker. But do we have to turn off assistance systems in this car? No. Nothing. Nothing. Okay, so this is, that's, you know, for this comparison, yeah. Like this won't apply to the EX40 uh, no. and the EC40, but that is because this doesn't follow the brand new EU regulations, which you know man has mandatory speed limit warning, yeah. which has mandatory lane keep assist and mandatory driver alert system. Yeah. This has none of that. Nothing, but uh, the speed uh, alert system will be in the same place as yeah. Uh, in the there's building. there's it's going to be a favorite button. A favorite button. Yeah. So I mean. I've talked about this many times in my videos and people are like, oh, you're so dumb, Chris. You're criticizing systems that are mandatory. I'm not criticizing the systems being there. I've read the actual mm. EU regulations like from, 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 from start to end because when you guys started commenting like about the regulations, I thought I should read them so I know what I'm talking about. I'm not criticizing the fact that there are regulations. I'm criticizing the way the regulations are implemented mm. in the different cars. And that is very different from car to car. Yeah. Because, oh, that's so nice. That is so easy to turn off the heated steering wheel in this car. Oh, uh. there, there's things about this infotainment yeah. system that is so much more better than that uh, yeah. EX30. But I'm criticizing, back to the regulations, I'm criticizing the way they are Im implemented. Because if you look at the brand new Volkswagen infotainment systems, which you'll find in the ID7, you can you can shortcut a shortcut in the top bar. Mm. You can customize a shortcut, and then when you press that, you can have all the driver systems in like a list, and you can just bam, 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 yeah. bam, and you turn them yeah. off instead of having them like buried in different menus mm. and like, are you sure you want to turn them off and blah blah blah. So that's what I'm criticizing the actual implementation, which is very much up to interpretation. If you go and read the EU regulations. There's n no guidelines of how you have to interpret, how you have to implement them. It just says what they have to be. Yeah. Like, so they don't have to be buried in menus. There doesn't have to be a prompt every time you're turning them off, like, are you sure? They can just be as they are mm. in Volkswagen's latest. And that sounds actually like a better idea, a better yeah. interface between you as a driver yeah. and, and, and the safety systems. Yeah. If you want to turn them off, just let them be easy accessible at, at least. Mm -hmm. Because now it's kind of clumsy and you have to, so many steps and sub menus you have to. Uh, what uh, are you gonna do? I'm man? gonna turn on one pedal driving. Yeah, uh, actually, the XC40 and C40 has automatic one pedal driving as well. Automatic? What Auto is automatic. It's, it's supposed to be like uh, predictive or something. It's supposed to. Uh, oh, is it, does it use the cruise control so when there's a car in front of you? So if there's no cars in front of you, uh, the one pedal drive would let go uh, so you can just roll further. But if you have a car in front of you, it will uh, use the one pedal drive and uh, engage the regenerative braking. I hate that system. Yeah, I it is actually quite crappy as well yeah, it's because so it's so unpredictable. Yeah. You don't know, are, are the car braking now? Are the car? Uh, yes. I, I, I absolutely hate the one yeah. pedal I, in I the had, automatic. Yeah. I had that in my Audi e-tron 55 back yeah. in uh, 2020 okay. and it's so terrible to use. Yeah, because it sounds like a good idea, but I actually don't like it because I don't, it's so unpredictable. Mm -hmm. um, I can't know what, what, what the heck is supposed to do. So, but I never use the one pedal drive. I just have it in off. But. Yeah. So, what I really like about this car, obviously, I think there's a little bit more road noise in this, and also this is on smaller wheels than that car, but I can hear it like there's more resonance yeah. from the rear, especially. Uh, the front end seems to be better insulated than the rear. It's like very apparent that the road noise is more from the back of this car, which is 
really interesting. Yeah, I sometimes have a lot of wind noise in, uh, on my left. Yeah. But obviously you are closer to the left side than the right side, but I feel like there's slightly more wind noise. And a lot more body roll going into the turn here. Yeah. So the suspension feels stiffer, like over bumps. Mm. It's not as, uh, as uh, supple, but also it, you feel the weight of this car. But also, you do sit a lot higher, and I really like that. This yeah. like feels like a proper SUV, where the EX30 is like a pseudo SUV. Mm. Most cars in this class, like the Skoda Enyaq, ID4, uh, Q4 e-tron, and Hyundai Ioniq uh, 5, and also the Kia EV6, you sit a lot lower. You don't feel like you're f driving a an oh, SUV. SUV. No, no. This you do. Yeah. So if you if you're looking for you know that. SUV driving experience, I think this is better. Yeah, this is a lot more noisy. A lot, ah, uh, slightly. But I think it feels quicker. Yeah. It's even though it has less power, even though it's heavier, and even though the zero to 100 kilometers an hour time is like 1.1 seconds slower, mm. this, I prefer the the old Volvo uh, yeah. EV yeah, dry train calibration. But there's also a different. Uh, <laughs> It's also a different setup uh, on uh, when you engage the all-wheel drive in this versus the EX, because in the EX you have to uh, use the clutch, but this is just uh, acing corn or something, so it will. Uh, electric oh yeah, 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 sure, sure. Yeah. Um, but um, we were driving, yes. Yeah, sure, yeah sure. but you had it in performance. We so had it, it in performance. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So this is a permanent four-wheel drive system. Mm -hmm. So the front motor is always engaged. No. No, N not on 24. Not on 24. You oh. Primarily in the rear, but uh, when hard acceleration, it will uh, engage. But it engages pretty quick. And this is a 24. Yeah, this is a 24. I did not feel that because in the EX30, when you don't have that all-wheel drive system, you can either have it uh, completely uh, connected or it's automatic, right? Yeah. And when it's not connected, when it's automatic, it actually it decouples and couples with a physical clutch. Yeah, with the clutch. Therefore, there's a little delay, but yeah. the delay here is just minimal. So. I prefer that driving wise, though this is more luxurious maybe, this mm. is, it, it's very different. Th that feels more modern and more balanced, but I still like the way this drives. Yeah. It still drives really nicely. Drives really so well. let's hop out of the cars and get to a conclusion and yeah, find out what is what mm. and which will we choose. Time for a conclusion. Uh, you go first. <laughs> Yeah, uh, if you're thinking about new versus new, then the price gap are pretty high. Yeah. And then this is quite appealing for the price. Because if you just have like 500, then it's a no brainer. Go for the 30. 500,000 kroners. 500,000, yeah. yeah. Uh, for the all wheel drive, ultra performance, uh, the full enchilada. But if you think about a second hand C40 versus a new one, then for me, I would go the C40. There's something about the design and something about the driving. Even if this maybe drives better and has more compliant suspension. Mm -hmm. But I still have, <laughs> I have a weak spot for the C40. You know, in, in Norway, we have this word. It has more uh, pundus. Pundus. <laughs> pundus. I don't know what the English word for that. It has more... more dad bod. Ba dad bod. Dad bod. It has more... Yeah, I don't know. A little more substance, maybe. Yeah, more yeah. substance. And even if you sacrifice some in the driving, because this is a hoot to drive. Yeah, it's, it's really fun to yeah. I really, it's really love fun. the way that drives. Uh, e even also, regardless conditions, winter roads, highways, country roads, ice track, yeah. it's, just, it's just a blast. But I will sacrifice that to get the additional functions in the C40 and the more ponders. A, li a little bit more substance. Yeah. If you're limited by a budget, and your budget is 500,000 kroners or about 48,000 euros, and you want or need all-wheel drive, or mm. you want the performance, or you want a small car, I think it's a no-brainer. Go for the EX30, because this is just gonna be too expensive if we're looking at new cars. Mm. But I think my conclusion is pretty close to Christian's conclusion. If it was between these two cars and I could get a one-year-old C40 for the same price, and especially because this car isn't finished when it comes to the software. I would rather go for this, even though I prefer driving that. Because yeah. I think as a package, especially 
with the older, you know, user interface mm. with the buttons in this car, it is so easy to use. This is one of the few cars I've driven in the past few years where I get in and everything just falls to the yeah. fingertips. It's so yeah. easy to use. It's a masterclass in interior ergonomics and it's one of the few cars I'm not annoyed at mm. with anything. Yeah. So if you want one of the last cars where you can get in and you don't have to turn off a billion gazillion, you know, driver assistance systems, I say go for the C40 because yeah. that's what I would do. That's what Christian would do. Definitely. And I just love the way this looks. Yeah. That car may be boring in vapor gray, but I think this is stunning <laughs> in yeah. vapor gray. <laughs> looks pretty good. So guys, let us know which you would yeah. like. What car would you go for? In the comment section down below. And also, if you like these comparison videos with me and Christian, comment down below. Give this video a thumbs up and let us know which car you would like us to compare mm. for the next video. So guys, I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, please drop me a thumbs up down below. And for more car content, as always, Please subscribe. See you guys later and goodbye.